Uh, well, I'm delighted to be here with, uh, as many of you will know, Frank McKenna from downtown and other things. We're down at the fabulous Rosso, and we're going to talk all things post-Brexit, great food, and uh, Frank McKenna. So, Frank, hi. Hi, Nick. Nice to see you. Good to see you. Actually, Nick, business personality of, of the, the year. year. Which was a great, I mean, God, I can't even get over that. It was a great night, though. I mean, we love celebrating success and we love celebrating big personalities. And, you know, you fit into both categories, there which you go. is nice. But for those that don't know what downtown in business is, nutshell, is what is anyone? it? Is there anyone who doesn't know what downtown is? <laughs> this guy is going um, We are the, uh, the, the, the fastest growing business club in the north of England. Uh, we're also located in Birmingham now, uh, so our reach is uh, getting broader and bigger. Uh, and we do three things really. Firstly, we connect businesses with one another. Hopefully that will lead to uh, business growth within the city and the city region. Second thing we do is, is lobby uh, yeah. public sector agencies such as the local authority, government and Europe. Um, up until recently, we'll talk a bit more about that later yeah. on perhaps. Yeah. And thirdly, we've got some fantastic um, online platforms. So we produce weekly bulletins, we've got really strong Twitter accounts and Twitter followings, right. and our members are featured uh, across our communications platform. What's going to happen to this momentum around the Northern Powerhouse? Is it going to fail? I don't think it will fail. In fact, I think that the yeah, I can use the, the transport analogy because much of the Northern Powerhouse agenda is based on uh, transport and infrastructure spend. Yeah. Uh, the trains left the station, so you can't okay. basically stop that okay. from continuing its momentum. I think what you will see less of is a government narrative around Northern Powerhouse. Right. So I think Theresa May's view is this has to be seen as uh, more equity and spending across the country, right. not simply focused on the north. The Tagli Telly Fruit de Mer, basically, yeah. okay. Uh, positives, I think the devolution agenda that we've mentioned means that places like Manchester will almost certainly have more of a say on their own destiny in the future. Okay. And I think what Manchester has proved is that it's very resilient against uh, shocks to the economy. So we came through the recession pretty mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think if you look at what Manchester has got in terms of its redevelopment and investment that we know is coming here, that's really positive. And the big thing for Manchester is its relationships with international investors outside of the European Union. And that, I think, will save this city right. from too much of the negativity which will inevitably happen. Whatever your views of leaving the European Union, the initial shock waves of that decision will be felt here and everywhere else across the UK. If Manchester gets a cold, does Liverpool get the flu? Uh, no, I think Liverpool's in a good place as well. Uh, I think Manchester is the capital of the north. And you know, people in Leeds might not particularly appreciate that, but it's a fact. Yep. I think people in Liverpool accept that, to right. be fair. Right. And I think that, again, the likelihood is you're going to have Andy Burnham, Labour's candidate, elected here. Who knows these days, but I will predict that that will happen in May. His mate is Steve Rotherham. I think he'll end up as the mayor in Liverpool. Right. And so, all of a sudden, you've got a, a cocktail, um, if I can use that phrase here. I will have a few. Um, were, you know, Liverpool and Manchester actually probably feed off each, off each other far more effectively than, it, than they yeah. have in the past. Ah. Thank you. Ah. Garlic bread cheese. Oh, that's marvellous. Thank you. Garlic, Garlic bread. bread. It's the future, this, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> A card holding Labour supporter. <laughs> <laughs> Not allowed to say that. Um, the Labour Party. Mm. It's been, it's been an interesting couple of years. You know, we've got political leaders at the moment who are a bit lost. And despite the fact that they're saying they're listening, they're actually not listening to the right messages. And they're still, as far as I'm concerned, out of touch with what the majority of people in this country want. There's a huge disconnect, right or wrong, between the population and the politicians. Mm. So is there not a more fundamental question than left and right or parliamentary democracy? Are we not in a global technological world in need of a massive overhaul of the way that the population and government interact with each other? Well, I think we're getting there. 
<laughs> and I think we've spoken about the Northern Powerhouse and people talk... So you think it's devolution is the answer I think it's got to be because I think as you get local decision making and you get the big decisions being taken in your city region then yeah. all of a sudden you feel as though you've got a greater access yeah. to your political leaders. You've got figureheads that you can relate to and hopefully um, they'll be able yeah. to you know, articulate what their localities are saying. Then. Kenyan Mandarin. Oh. Well, businessmen, they drink my wine, but we're <laughs> going to have a cocktail today. What, what's this? This is Mancunian Mandarin. A Mancunian Mandarin. Here it is. Oh, thank you. This is the artesian spice. Thank you. And I was like, wow. There you go. They look lethal, don't they? These are the, uh, the new cocktails they're doing. Now, I don't know about this. I will find out the detail, but I think it's basically a link between Singapore and some fantastic hotels over there. And we're on a cocktail exchange. It's pretty good, though. Taste. I think I've obviously got the girly one. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to get past the uh, froth here. That's just, no, that's just my interview with you. Yeah. See what I did there. Yeah, cheers, 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 cheers. I'm going to leave it here just in case if you want to have some. Okay. Thank you, that's lovely. That's uh, great. Thank you. Cheers. Thank Sorry. you. I was to ask you for three figures that, have, that mean something to you. This doesn't have to be about political leadership or anything. Okay. Whose book you would read that I mean a lot. And ideally, if they'd come out of Manchester or the North, that'd be great. But sort of on top of mind, who, who inspires you? Who would you want to be around? Who would you want to have dinner with? Yeah. Um, Big hero of mine and a mate as well um, was Tony Wilson. Okay. And I have read his book. I've read several about Tony actually, um, some of which were more accurate than others, I think. Okay. Um, so Tony, uh, big influence in terms of downtown. Was he? Uh, yeah. Because, How was that? Well, they started something uh, after the bomb here. Tony, Tom Blocks, and Peter Savile, that guy, started something called the McEnroe Group. Okay. Um, because Manchester City Council or its economic development arm uh, produced a plan that was so awful that those guys said you cannot be serious so called it the McEnroe Group it's and that it. was almost like a, a sort of uh, a precursor to downtown because it went to lobbied the council and said come on we can do better than this <laughs> and again that's what I admire about Manchester because other cities would have said who do you think you are? Right. You know, bugger off, we know what we're doing. The leadership here said, no, come on in, right. come and work with us, what right. do you think? And look at the result. He was an absolute genius, and he was a genius in so many different areas of life. So he had great business ideas, not particularly good at business, but okay. great business ideas. Yep. Had a great ear for superb music had an imagination about how things should be, hence things like the Hacienda. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing that... Did you go to the Hacienda? A couple of times. Did you? Yeah. Raving before, away? Before I knew him, actually. Did you? Yeah, before I knew Tony. Um, and I think the, the, the thing that he always used to say, and I'm sure people said it before him, certainly people have said it too, but surround yourself with great people, right. and he did that. Number one, who would be number two? Um, number two, I think, again, somebody that, that uh, I've met on a number of occasions, I wouldn't say I know him, but I've met him a number of times, and that would be Tony Blair, uh, because I think that Tony Blair, whatever you think of him now, in hindsight, you know, 1997, he made Great Britain, the United Kingdom, call this place what you want to call it, uh, a much nicer place. Was that because he got rid of Article 4? I think that was part of it. <laughs> I just think his own attitude and, and there, was a ch there was a shift in terms of culturally how Britain felt and how it became. I said, love to have dinner with him sort of guy I think you could go for a pint with actually yeah. uh, and just you know find out what made him tick and yeah that would be uh, well that's a very interesting number two controversial we like yeah, that why but, not but, 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 but heartfelt so number three then um, number three it, well it, in terms of the person that you know we probably have most to do with as a decision maker uh, and somebody has said more than once during the afternoon I admire greatly, it would be Howard. Yeah. You know, so, um, great company, um, very astute, 
great as a sounder board for business ideas. Uh, a tremendous ambassador, not just for Manchester, but increasingly for the North. Somebody who has driven forward an agenda that I am a passionate believer in, which is devolution and regional mayors. And his legacy will be here for a long time to come. Rank's been great to catch up with you. All the success. Cheers.